Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we're continuing to work on the desk and we've got this base here. This is all of the main joinery on the base, all of these straight pieces. So we're gonna be going through the mortise and tenons on this and all of the pieces needed to make, uh, well, basically the base on this. So let's dive in and have a little bit of fun with some joinery. Let's work on the base structure. We're going to be working on all of the straight pieces on this. And what I want to do is cut them to length and then cut them to width. All of the rough stock that I'm using is actually inch and a half by three and a half inches. And I want to take it down to inch and a half by three inches. I like that the, 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 the dimension between those two looks a little bit better than the beefier four and, uh, three and a half inch wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut most of them to length and then rip them down as opposed to ripping long eight to ten foot long boards i find it easier to rip smaller segments it gives me a chance to take a break and relax uh, so most of these are around two foot long each one taking eh, two to three minutes to rip down so it doesn't take that long to rip out the pieces because there are only uh, seven total one of them being six foot six inches long and so this is a four ppi um, handsaw and it goes through it rather quickly um, being giving a little bit of chance to take a break in between actually uh, this was just a the morning job to rip all these down to the right width then we can take them over to the bench and smooth them out if you've done it right it just takes a few passes and you've got a nice clean surface I set a little bit of line left from the marking gauge and just a couple strokes more and that comes right off Next thing I want to do is mark them to length. For each of the feet, I made one, and I'm going to use that as a template to mark off all of the other ones. And then the same thing with the back verticals. I made one of them, and I'm going to use that to mark the other one so that they are exactly the same length. Uh, that way I'm not, measure, not marking to a specific measurement, I'm marking to reality. Mark all the way around the board, and then cut it down. I'm going to be using a carcass saw to do most of the cutting on this, cross cut and it works relatively quickly. Uh, making faces is incredibly important. It, it actually uh, helps quite a bit. So there are the six main pieces for the brace. Base, next thing we need to do is actually cut this angle on the foot. And I used one of them and I cut it all with the measurements from the plans that I'm working on. And then I, once I have that one where I want, I can use it to trace all the other ones so that all the feet are exactly the same. The little bit on the toe, I find it easier to cut that first because we're going mostly cross grain. I'm going to be using my carcass saw and that will cut across the grain very nicely. It is a, a daunting thing to stay close to the line on an angle. But if you take your time, it goes pretty easily. And if you're off by a little bit, well, that's what they make planes for. For the larger one, I'm going to take it over and use the big handsaw again. It makes quick work of it. Run it down with a plane, just a few strokes to get rid of the saw marks. And we want to check it for square, make sure everything is the way we want it. And in this case, mm, I need one more pass right down by the toe. And then we can check it again, and ah, that's what I like. Nice and square, all to the sides, and uh, ready to go on. Now on the back, we're going to cut a large tenon. This is going to be an inch and a half by an inch and a half tenon in the back. Uh, it is, it, it's kind of reticent of uh, timber framing, but in this case, it's going to be a little different because eventually we're going to have it held in place with pins. Uh, this back joint will actually be glued together. So once we've marked all the way around an inch and a half in, now I'm going to grab one of the other blocks and mark off um, an eyeballing of centering where that is. And then I can use those marks to, s to set my marking gauge. Uh, the mortise gauge has the two pins, and rather than trying to set the two pins where I want them, I'll mark the board and then put the pins and the marking gauge into the board, and this will give me an exact measurement that I can carry all the way around all four of the legs. I'm going to grab my tenon saw and then start cutting down either side. The tenon saw has, has ripped teeth, which make a quick work of running with the grain here. I'm going to do it all from one side, then rotate the board around and do it from the other side. Then grab my carcass saw, come back, and cut in the shoulders. And you get this little block that comes off. If you needed to, uh, bring in the chisel and do a little bit of trimming on here. Um, sometimes I like to grab the calipers and make sure that it's the exact width all the way down. At this point, I'm going to start marking off all the joints. I'm going to mark them at top and bottom, which end of the bench do they go on, and what is the number of the joints. So that's number seven, and this one is number eight on the bottom. Hey, look at that. Now we want to create the mortises that this tenon will fit into. So on the vertical bits, we're going to use that exact same marking gauge that we set up for marking the width of the tenon. And we're going to use that to line the top and bottom of the mortising line. And then I'm going to set up another mortising gauge to then measure the width of the tenon and use that to lay in exactly where it needs to be. 
Then we're going to transfer those marks all the way around to the other side. So we have the marks on the exact same side on the other side and then use those same marking gauges to then put those lines onto the other side. So for this one, I'm gonna use an auger bit to take out the majority of the waste. I'm gonna run eight holes all the way through this, one in each corner, and then uh, one in between each of those other holes. I'm gonna go until I feel the point sticking out the other side, and then I'm gonna stop, back it out, and once I have all of them run almost through, I'm gonna turn it around and then come at it from the other side. That way I can put the point right into the hole, and I got these really nice matching up holes. Once we have all of this um, cleaned out and ready to go, we can then bring it over and start doing the chisel. I'm actually gonna set it up in the vise so that I'm chiseling through into air. This way I'm not hitting my bench or anything else underneath. Some people like to set on the bench with a sacrificial piece of wood underneath it, um, but I actually like doing it in the vise. There's a little bit of flex to it as the vise is um, open air, but it, it works pretty well. Now I'm going to use the edge of the chisel to make sure that my joint is flat all the way across. If there's anything sticking up in the middle, I can come back and clean it off. And then again, check it with the edge of the chisel to make sure that I'm contacting on the, uh, the inside and outside point. It doesn't have to be contacting in the middle exactly, um, as the glue in this really won't be doing too much. We'll be actually putting pins through this to hold it in place eventually. Hey, happiness! Now we're going to start working on the other mortise and tenon, and this will be for the big back stretcher that goes from one end to the other. I'm going to make this tenon three quarter inch wide, and it is going to be uh, three and a half inches, uh, three and a quarter inches long. This way, it will go through the three inch wide board and then stick out a quarter inch because it'll be a proud through tenon. Uh, whenever you're cutting big tenon surfaces, uh, use a little bit of wax on the tenon saw that helps it from binding up. I have to make these short stabbing motions here so I don't run into the bench on the other side. Use the tenon saw to cut down the cheeks and then use the carcass saw to come in and clean up the shoulders. And then again, pare out anything you want. Use the edge of the chisel to make sure that it's nice and straight all the way across. You don't have anything sticking up or fat in the middle. Take your time, clean it up nicely, and the more time you spend on this, the easier it'll be. I want to actually make this a four-sided tenon, so we're going to come in and mark in a quarter inch on this side as well. That way we have a quarter inch of reveal all the way around it. And it'll give it a nice fit as the shoulder will then fit into the board uh, working in. Again, come in with the tenon saw, cut down the grain, and then the carcass saw cut across the grain. Make sure it is square to the tenon and we're good to go. Next we need to create the mortise and we're going to lay this out. I'm actually going to put the tenon on top of the board and that will allow me to mark out exactly where the tenon will intersect with this mortise. Set up the mortising gauge that I used to mark the tenon and use the exact same thing to mark the mortise. In this one I'm going to use a 3 quarter inch wide auger bit so it just barely touches the line on either side and I'm going to drill in halfway from one side and I'm going to do three holes halfway from one side, then I'm going to turn the board around, put it back into the vise, and drill the three holes on the other side. Uh, because it being a really long shot, the holes may not line up perfectly, um, so if there's a little bit of slop, I want that to be in the middle of the board and not on the outside where you see it. So that's why I'm going to come in from halfway from one side, halfway from the other side. And then from this point, it makes pretty quick work to chisel out the waste. Keep away from the lines as long as you can until you're really, really close to them, and then set right in the line and drive it vertical. We want to, um, on this one, I'm basically just eyeballing vertical. Once you've done it a few times, it is actually pretty easy to eyeball and track it all the way down. Again, I want to then come in with a chisel and check the inside, make sure that it is nice and smooth. I had a little bit of something binding in here and I couldn't quite find out where it was, so it was easier to put the tenon in as far as it would go without really forcing it. And then it became very apparent, oh, it's hitting that. And now we can actually slide the tenon all the way in and I'm really happy with the fit on that. It came out really well tap this in and we're ready to go. Now we can actually assemble this, start putting it together and see what it looks like. We're putting the legs on either end of the back stretcher and then we will be putting the feet and the, the top support in to those verticals on the backs. And I'm just I'm tickled pink with how these came out. Nice tight fit down in there. We're not doing any of the, the fit and finish yet. We're just trying to get it together so that we can stand this up and see how it all looks. And yes, um, I'm getting happy. I'm looking forward to uh, actually finishing these benches. So there you have it. We have a base on our desk 
and it is basically just the the, 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 the raw base. We still have some bent laminations that's going to go from foot to top as well as leg to leg, um, and that will be what stiffens this whole thing up and gives it some structure to it. Um, those will be coming up in the next week. We'll be doing all of the bent lamination, hopefully. <laughs> but now we have all of the main joinery on it, and this is a, a very simple, easy thing to do. So don't let this type of joinery um, really worry you. It is relatively easy. I'd love to hear your thoughts, ideas, concerns. What do you think about this? What do you think I could have done better? I'd love to hear that. Let me know that down below. Also, I want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. Everyone scrolling over here on the side has helped make this possible. So thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about Patreon, I have links to that down below. And thank you to everyone who's helping keeping this channel going. It would not be here without you. So I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Yep, this video truly is all about the base.